Ah, I am so confident. What is confidence? Before we define how to improve your confidence, what is confidence? What is the difference between being confident and cocky, confident and arrogant, confident and having bravado? I think one of the key characteristics of confidence is that confidence is when you have when you don't have anything to prove. When I was training for the 2011 USA Memory Championship, I had won twice, the two previous years. And my coach, TC Cummings, a former Navy SEAL, he said, Ronnie, how do you feel? And I sat there for a minute and I said, I feel like I have nothing to prove. And he laughed and he said, man, I have been waiting two years to hear you say that. In other words, he wanted me to feel confident that I didn't have anything to prove to anybody. And in 2011, training for that tournament, I felt confident. I had nothing to prove. Now, let me be clear here. If you want to run a marathon or run a 5K to prove to yourself that you can do it, that's awesome. And I encourage that. Or if I want to win the USA Memory Championship to prove to myself that I can do it, that's awesome. When I say nothing to prove, what I mean is, in other words, you're not trying to impress others or intimidate others, prove something to others that you are valuable of their attention or their affection or of their respect or praise. On the other hand, an arrogant or cocky person with their bravado, they might try to impress or intimidate you by putting on a persona, by surrounding themselves with a bunch of fancy things or acting like a tough guy. And that is a persona designed to intimidate or impress. And that's actually a lack of confidence. Sometimes when we see somebody like that, we're like, man, that person walks around like, like they just own everything. I wish I could be confident like that. Oftentimes, that is bravado or cockiness that is compensating for a lack of confidence. There's a difference between wanting to achieve your goals because you like the challenge and you want to grow and you want to see what you're capable of and you can do and doing it to impress or intimidate others. That's a distinction between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is when you have faith in your abilities and your capabilities and your skills because you have put in the training, you have put in the discipline. In 2009, for the USA Memory Championship, I walked over to the 2009 USA Memory Championship trophy and I pointed to it before the tournament started and I said, you're coming home with me. And people will say, well, isn't that cockiness? Isn't that arrogance? First of all, I didn't say it where anybody else could hear it. It was just for me. So I don't think it was cockiness or arrogance. But more importantly, it was coming from a point of I, had, I was relying on my training. I knew how hard I worked. I knew how much discipline I had put in. And so that gave me a sense of confidence. And I believe that's the difference between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is an inner peace that comes from discipline and training and work. Arrogance is a persona when you haven't done the work, when you haven't put in the effort and you're trying to impress or intimidate. Confidence is, I hope they like me, but if they don't, I'll be okay. I was recently talking to someone and he said, Ronnie, what do you think about this statement? Ronnie is great. Everybody likes him. I said, I think that's a pretty good statement. He said, but is it reasonable? I said, no, nah, I don't think it's reasonable. He said, what would be a more reasonable statement? I said, a more reasonable statement would be a lot of people like me, but not everybody does. And that's okay. And he just smiled and he said, that's it, man. And when he said that, it just increased my confidence level so much, knowing that I would be okay if people didn't like me. Tip number one to have more confidence. Number one, work. Very few things are going to make you feel as good about yourself as a hard day's work. Just get out there and put in a full day's work. At the end of the day, you're going to feel so good. Now, some days are going to come along and you're not going to feel so great. You're not going to feel like working. I'm going to tell you to work even on those days. Just do what you're supposed to do. And when you do what you're supposed to do, when you put in the work, it's going to increase your confidence. Point number two, keep a journal. And I want this 
to be a special journal for you. In this journal, the only thing I want you to put in it is confidence building stuff. So in your confidence journal, I want you to think back as far as you can. Think back to when you're 11 or 12 years old. For me, that was a long time ago. For you, it might have just been a couple years ago. But for me, it was 35 years ago. I write in this journal when I was 11 years old, and I think about accomplishments and things that I did well back then. And I, I remember a time when I was 11 years old, I won a competition called the bench sit. It's where you sit up against the wall and you pretend like you're sitting at a bench, but there's nothing there. And it's really hard on your legs. To, your legs will start shaking. Well, when I was 11 years old, I won a competition against 90 other sixth graders. I wrote that in my journal. When I was 11 years old, I won the bench sit competition. I still have the certificate for that. I still have that certificate. That's how much it meant to me. Another thing I wrote in my journal is that when I was 14 years old, I won an award for selling the most newspapers. I wrote in my journal, when I was 16 years old, I got that hit in the softball game, game that was the winning hit for my softball team. And I remember that so vividly, hitting that triple in a softball game. I wrote down every single one of my accomplishments. I wrote down, I memorized numbers on live television. I wrote down, I volunteered to join the United States Navy. And that's not, so it's not, that's not necessarily a goal. It's not necessarily that I accomplished, but it's something that I did that was positive. And you may say to yourself, well, Ron, I'm so young. I can't think of any good things that I did. I bet you can. Did you get an A on that test in your history or Spanish class? It was a really tough test and you pulled it through. That's something. Did you see an old lady walking across the street one day and maybe she needed help carrying her bags and you helped her? That's something you can feel good about. So write down things that you can feel good about that you've done in your journal and accomplishments that you've made, no matter how small they are, or even if you have to go back to when you're 11 or 12 years old. And just write and write and write until you can't think of anything new. Write for hours if you can and then keep this confidence journal. And then maybe once a month, go through and look at that confidence journal and be like, man, this is a really cool person. Man, look at all the things this person has done. Even if there's something as simple as I got an A on the history test. And when you remind yourself of your accomplishments, I do believe it's gonna build your confidence in yourself. Tip number three, set daily goals. And these don't have to be big goals. They can be very small. I have three daily goals right now. And my goal is when I get out of bed, I wanna do a plank for one minute. Just a plank like this, a plank for one minute. Now I'm building, hopefully it's gonna get up to two, three, four, five, six minutes. But I wanna do a plank for a minute every day. I wanna do 25 push-ups right when I get out of bed and I wanna drink a glass of water. That's three goals, and I can accomplish those within the first 15 minutes of being awake. Well, what does that do? That starts off my day with, boom, I already accomplished three goals. Maybe one of your goals might be, hey, I want to make my bed today. Well, get up, make your bed. Boom, you've already accomplished a goal. If you can set for yourself little bitty small goals like that, and then you accomplish them, it's going to boost your confidence. Tip number four, be honest. Tell the truth. Shakespeare once said, oh, what a tangle web we weave when at first we practice to deceive. When you're not honest and you lie to others, you know what happens? You begin distrusting yourself. And when you distrust yourself, your confidence sinks. I remember my sales manager when I was 19 years old, somebody stole something from me. And he said to me, Ronnie, I firmly believe when a person steals, they steal the most from themselves. That is so true. When somebody steals something from you, they're stealing the most from themselves. They're stealing their confidence in themselves. They're stealing their trust in themselves. Those things are valuable. Tell the truth. Tip number five, be accountable. Be accountable maybe to somebody else, but be accountable to yourself. Benjamin Franklin once said, how few there are who have the courage enough to own their faults or resolution enough to mend them. Acknowledge your mistakes, apologize when you're wrong, and you will see this will boost your confidence because again, you can trust yourself. Tip number six, discipline yourself. U.S. Navy SEAL Jocko Wilnick says, discipline equals freedom. What does discipline equals freedom mean? It means this, I recently went to the Great Wall of China 
And when I went to the Great Wall of China, I looked up there and I said, man, that's the peak. That's the highest point. I want to go up there to that highest point. And so I hiked up there. It took me an hour and a half. It was a high elevation. I was winded. I was exhausted. But when I got up there, it felt so good. There was very few people up there, though. There was probably only four or five people. Down at the bottom, the lower level of the Great Wall of China, there was hundreds of people. Why was there no one else up there or very few people up there? Because it was physically challenging to get up there. I do jujitsu. I try to do push-ups and I try to eat healthy. That makes my body, at even the age of 46, able to do endure a little bit of endurance. That discipline of working out gives me the freedom when I go on vacation to hike to the top of the Great Wall of China or go swimming in the ocean while the other people are sitting on the beach or sitting at the bottom because they don't have the stamina to do it. By having the discipline to work out, that gives me the freedom to do the things that I want to do. Jim Rohn put it this way, you will either pay the price of the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. In other words, is discipline and working out going to be hard? Yeah, it is. And you're going to have to pay that price. Or you will pay the pain of regret. And that pain of regret is you get sick because you haven't been working out. And then you regret you didn't work out. And th I'm applying this to working out, but it could be anything. You will either pay the pain of the discipline of studying for that test or you'll pay the pain of regret, failing the test because you didn't study. There's gonna be pain either way. Choose your pain and your confidence level is gonna go up. Stop procrastinating. If you've got 10 things to do and at the end of the day you don't do them, you're gonna think, man, I can't even trust myself. I have all these things to do on my things to do list, but I didn't get anything done today. I just watched TV all day or I just goofed off all day on social media. Get stuff done. If you have a list of 10 things to do and number 10 is a huge item and it's hard to do, do the hard, big, difficult task first and then the rest will fall into place. Stop procrastinating. It's going to boost your confidence. Number eight, fight weak emotions with logic. We all have the weak emotions. They creep up on me. Recently, I asked somebody if they wanted to go do something on a, on a Saturday night and they said, no, they, they, they can't go. And they didn't give me any explanation. So my mind starts going crazy. It starts thinking, why don't they want to hang out with me? Why don't they want to talk to me? Why don't they want to spend time with me? I'm a likable person. And then it hit me. You're dealing with this emotionally. It was beating my confidence level down. I said, let's deal with this logically. Let's list out all the possible reasons why they had good reason not to hang out with you Saturday night. Well, maybe their kids were sick. Maybe their mom was sick. They needed to spend time with them. Maybe they had a test that they needed to study for. Maybe they're going through depression and they just don't feel like getting out of the house. Maybe they're an introvert and talking to people and being around people is exhausting for them. In other words, there's a list of reasons why they could have said no to me and none of those have anything to do with me. When you start feeling down on yourself by the way other people are responding to you, that's emotional. Use logic and ask yourself, what are the other reasons? What else could be going on here? I think you'll find there are a hundred other reasons or a dozens of other reasons that would explain their actions. And when you do that, it's going to increase your confidence because you're using logic, not emotion. And my last tip to improve your confidence, do something to give yourself a mental edge. Mike Tyson used to go jogging at 4.30 in the morning. Why would he go jogging at 4.30 in the morning? Because he knew his opponent wasn't doing that. And it gave him a little bit of a mental edge. I'm doing something that he's not doing. When I was training for a jiu-jitsu tournament a couple years ago, I gave up alcohol 30 days before the tournament. Now, would having a beer three weeks before a jiu-jitsu tournament affect my performance in a jiu-jitsu tournament? Not at all. So why did I do it? Why did I give up alcohol for 30 days? I gave up the alcohol because I wanted to have a mental edge. I wanted to be doing something that I figured my opponent probably wasn't doing. So give yourself that gives you a mental edge, whether it's in studying for a test, whether it's in work, or whether it's in a sporting event. Do something that you think nobody else is doing, no matter how small, no matter how silly, and you will have that back in your mind. You know what? I know I'm doing something they're not doing. I have a mental edge. 
Doing all of these things will boost and improve your confidence. Remember, the reason that these things work is because these are things you're all working on yourself. And confidence comes from within of knowing your skills and your abilities and what you're capable of and the discipline and you put into your training. If you don't put in the work, if you don't put in the training, if you don't make an effort, then you are going to resort to arrogance or cockiness or bravado. And that is not what you want. You want the confidence that comes from discipline. If you like these tips and if you think you might get some use from it, or if you like this video and you appreciate how much work I put into it, please give me a thumbs up and I appreciate that. Comment down below and let me know what your favorite confidence tip was. Or if you have an idea on improving your confidence and I didn't list it, go ahead and you list that down below as well. Please subscribe. And when you subscribe, click that little bell alert so you get alerted whenever I upload a new video. We got a lot of videos coming out and they're all designed to help you out. Down in the description below, I also have my Black Belt Memory course. I'm a USA Memory Champion. I have a course on improving your memory. I think you're gonna to wanna to check it out. And my Instagram link is also in the description. I'll see you on the next video. We appreciate all the likes.